All right, it's on. Welcome, beautiful people, to another vlog. Um, I finally got my GoPro going on. I mean, I haven't done any, too many GoPro-type videos in a long time. I'm here leaving a mail office, uh, the USPS office, because I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to get some packages. I was trying to purchase some, like you know, uh, I guess some packages I can send mail to. But the line was so long on a Saturday. That I was just like, after standing there for like five minutes, I was just like, fuck it. I'm just leaving. And I, that's what I did. That's just is me leaving uh, the USPS to go to another event. Um, I don't even know why. You know what's so annoying to me? With USPS stores, or I guess they're called your stores, whatever. Um, it's just weird at the fact that USPS, whenever I go into a USPS store, they're always long ass lines. Or two, they're never open when you have the ability to go. Like, if you have the ability to go on a Saturday, well, it was on a Saturday, but they close early. But it's just weird to me for, like, mail offices or even banks. When you have availability, you have time to do stuff, you can't actually go on a Saturday or Sunday. They only have <laughs> operating hours on the weekdays. And if it is a Saturday, they close at, like, 12 or 1 p.m. That's, like, the dumbest shit ever. I don't understand why. Now I get it. Like for a, as a worker, you don't want to work on a Saturday and Sunday. But shit, goddamn, uh, people within fast food work work on Saturdays and Sundays. And if maybe they should get paid overtime if they don't want to work. If if you can't get workers that want to work on those weekends, but it literally makes no sense, especially when it comes to banking, when it comes to mailing, or it comes to anything else. Your office hours don't happen on the weekends. Even when we think about doctors, which actually reminds me to talk about body odor because this is a body odor vlog. So for body odor, um, there's not really too much to talk about, I guess. Like I already mentioned the fact that I was taking some tests uh, from the gastroenterologist. The reason why I wanted to take these tests, uh, one was a hydrogen breath test for lactose intolerance. And the other one was like some type of stool sample and blood work to see if I have celiac disease and celiac disease pretty much is like you know you're you're gluten intolerant and the main reason why I did that is because you know sometimes you hear in the comments people are like no it's the gluten man it's the gluten sometimes people in the comments are like oh, it's the candida if you if you take the candida diet uh, you know all you gotta do is just stop eating what, what do they say all you gotta do is just eat meat and plants and your candida's be gone and then you stop smelling bad like which is a thing I actually want to actually test to test if I have candida but the thing is I know even if I have candida or not, it doesn't mean that that is the culprit or that is the real reason why I smell bad. Um, because even if you, I don't know, become successful, you have lowered your, your reactions due to the uh, candida diet or celiac diet. Usually it's because you're just removing a lot of inflammatory foods that cause you, I don't know, that really didn't help your body and weakened your immune system, to be absolutely honest. but. I remember having like there was this one guy that emailed me and he was like, "Oh yeah, um, I just stopped eating gluten and I just been eating like pasta <laughs> for six to eight months." And I think he, he ate like the same type of pasta dish. I don't even think it was like even like like a specific dish. I think he just put pasta and like tomato sauce, <laughs> and that was pretty much it. So I was like, "Let me just check, you know, to verify if I have cel celiac disease," and uh, I didn't. I didn't go to repoop the poop files either, so maybe that would maybe if I did repoop the poop files like last time because the uh, I guess the uh, nurse was like, oh, you have too much poop in your poop files and you need small amount of poop for us to analyze the poop. Uh, I didn't do all that, but nonetheless, I still got a result back, um, and I never felt like I had celiac disease in the first place. So that's the case. That's that. Um, Another thing, I guess, that's body odor related is I went to, to actually yesterday, yesterday early in the morning, on a Friday morning, I went to a primary care physician. And if you're thinking like me, like most primary care physicians don't really know anything about anything. I don't want to say they don't know anything about anything, but there's just a common th amount of things that they're going to know, common amount of things that uh, the average person is going to come up to them about. Or there's like I don't know, like diabetes, 
high blood pressure, um, maybe cancer. So they'll probably have a wealth of knowledge on just those common things that most people come by. But when it has to talk about like metabolic, weird metabolic body odor that another person or the, the I guess the victim cannot smell or the patient cannot smell, but they feel that they have it and they don't know when it happens or if it's uh, intermittent or etc of course they have no idea what to say they'll say just shrug their shoulders and say hey let me just uh send you off to a, a dermatologist let me send you off to a gastroenterologist but in this particular uh, primary care physician i just had to do some type of like health checkup what was, what was it called a physical so basically the physical was they just asked me a bunch of questions and see if I, and I give them a yes or no. Like, oh, do you have, uh, do you have joint pain? They asked me a lot of like old people questions, questions that like if I was 65 years old, I was like a senior citizen, I would like understand why I would get these questions. Do you have joint pain? Do you have arthritis in the knee? Do you, do you, uh, when you wake up in the morning, do you hear a ringing in your ears? Like they asked me like these old people questions. Like things I think if I was like 80 years old, I'm like, yeah, sometimes I hear people talking in my ear and I wake up and I, there's no one there. And sometimes I get a lapse in memory. They say like, you know, so I, I would understand if that was the case, but I'm like, I'm in my 30s. I'm not having knee pain and arthritis and waking up in the middle of the night or having gout or some shit. Well, gout is not really an old person disease. Diab diabetes is not an old person's disease either. But in any case, within this visit, I already knew it was going to be pointless. Nonetheless, I decided to make it important by just giving out uh, or just give my, my, my uh, pretty much breaking down what has been happening to me for the last 19 years with this weird body odor and seeing if I can at least get some type of referral clue him having some knowledge of uh, an organization that he can relate to me so I can continue on this quest to try to find a diagnosis. The problem is um, I did, I, I, I spoke to him, I, I gave like a 20 minute, I don't want to say a rant, I don't even want to say a, a lecture, but you know, I was just talking for a good like five to 10 minutes um, about my weird disorder. I told him about this last year, but you know, doctors see hundreds of patients, so he probably completely forgot about me, and he probably thought it was fucking weird. In any case, um, I talked to him about it. I said, okay, I had this weird order condition at the age of 15. Um, naturally, I thought it, when people were talking bad about me, I thought they were being assholes, etc. But as I went out to different, different different places and met different people uh, regardless if it was in school or not I would get the same reactions blah 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 blah, blah. throughout college or workforce I had these conditions blah 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 I tried many different things and I know that food is a cause or can eliminate or uh, exacerbate the odor do you have any leads or anything I can do that you would know that can help me find a cure to this weird condition and you know I also brought my Japanese body odor analysis if you don't know what that is basically it was like an analysis from some type of laboratory in Japan where I had to wear a short 48 hours and then they they uh, did some type of gas chromatography to analyze the certain odorants or chemicals that are coming off the shirt and they gave me this they gave me a paperback explaining these are the things that we have sensed on your shirt and i got like a pdf for it i printed it out i showed it to them so you know to validate that i'm not crazy or it's in my head or i'm just paranoid even though i do think i'm paranoid um and he's like oh okay uh-huh uh-huh this is interesting but his response after like this five to ten minutes i guess explanation of what's going on with me he was just saying okay well i don't know <laughs> i don't know how to help you but i'm going to give it to this other doctor his other doctor was castillo and see if he knows anything so i'm not expecting anything back honestly he said he's going to send it be printed out or he copied like my japanese body odor analysis thing and he printed you know copied it over and he was going to send it to some other doctor to see if they know anything but you know, I don't have high hopes for it. I'm naturally thinking there's not, he's not gonna, there's not gonna be anything uh, that the other doctor is going to be able to have some insight on, to be honest. I don't, 
I just don't think primary care physicians have this in-depth knowledge about this. They just, they're there for the common uh, disorders or illnesses in terms of trying to find, uh, I don't know, going to other research, uh, knowing about research facilities or organizations and stuff. They probably have no knowledge. So I'm, I don't have high hopes for that, but I'm supposed to do another physical. So there's that. Um, and I'm thinking about going to a liver doctor. So there's that too, but I know I tried to do that last year, and when I tried to do it last year, they were like, oh, um, like, I think they're called, I think liver doctors are called hepatologists, and when I try to schedule something for a liver doctor, they were saying that this was only, you can only, hepatologists are only going to look for, like, cancer things like related to cancer so it was sort of pointless to go to a hepatologist uh so i feel like i'm going to get the same rundown if i try to do it again so i haven't scheduled or called anybody about the liver doctor but that's like the only other thing i can really think of at this moment maybe there's some type of liver doctors there's a number of different tests liver doctors can do to, to determine if your 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 liver is breaking down a particular um, amino acid because that's what team team out is like your team out in, in general is like your body's not your liver's not breaking down some type of amino acid or something like that and therefore it's like building up in your system and then it's like emitting out of your skin and breath and sweat so there has to be something similar to that fashion where they can just analyze that they can they okay i'll give you this type of test but i i don't know i'm just going to explore that and see if i can get something like that and if it isn't that if a, if a, if a liver doctor can't do that i know it exists i know it i mean that's the way they they were able to first diagnose team out someone there was some doctor i don't know what which doctor but there was some doctor that did that made some type of i don't know observation and said okay i want you to drink x amount of this thing that has a lot of choline in it and then we'll look at your urine and they did it and they found out okay this guy is not able to break down or process choline because of some reason you know so i don't know liver doctor and and then if that doesn't work i don't know maybe go back to the mom nail center try to email these guys and see what happens i'm not sure <laughs> But as you see here, um, I'm driving through all throughout uh, Jacksonville. The reason why I'm driving through Jacksonville is because there is a thing that was happening in the Jacksonville main library. It's called uh, Jacksonville PopCon. And it had like a picture of like Spider-Man and, you know, Marvel superheroes and, you know, I guess uh, a lot of uh, video game aesthetics lore iconography etc so i was like oh this might be interesting because i'm you know i'm trying to be more social in 2024 so i'm trying to go out to more things so I'm, it's located in downtown miami um but uh to make a long story short it's not really uh that great of a i don't think it was that great of a, an expo it felt like a, it felt like pretty much a teenage anime expo it was just like a bunch of teenagers dressed in like garbage ass anime that a lot of people like and that pretty much oh yeah and then there were tons of booths with with teenage with teenagers dressed in garbage anime that everybody likes and they were like send, send, selling candles and i don't know incense and you know art and such there wasn't really too much like american pop like you know superheroes it was more so like you know, garbage ass anime that everybody likes. Expo. In any case, um, what else happened? Well, I, I actually, maybe I should just show you the footage of that right now. All right, so here we are, downtown Jacksonville, and I am right by the Jacksonville Main Library. So here you'll be able to see all the different goodies and interesting things. Or generic things. It was a very underwhelming experience. But you know, like it's in a library. I, you know, you didn't have to pay anything. If, I'm pretty sure if you had to pay like twenty to thirty bucks, I'm pretty sure they would have a good 
budget. There were some also some cool stuff there. There was at least like a like a video game section uh, below. You'll be able to see that maybe if if I continue to let this feel footage play. But in any case, let's talk about other things. Another thing that happened um, on this Saturday was after the Jack's Pop Icon or Pop Con thing that was hosted at the library, I also had a date with the photographer. Not like an actual date, but you know, an appointment with a photographer. I was going to do a photo shoot. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, 2024 is the year. It's my year to be more social. So not only is it me going out and trying to socialize or trying to you know go into group activities and connect with people, it's also to date. And I've been having bad luck with dating for the past couple of years. I've always been trying to go on Bumble and and uh, was it Bumble Black Hinge. I went on Tinder a little bit, but not really. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, like with, the with these dating apps, the primary thing here is your photos. If you have really good photos, even if you look average looking, even if you're average looking at best, you can still make your, you can still look presentable. You can still have like engaging photos where people are like, wow, this person looks uh, pretty good when the sunlight shines on them in a certain direction. You know, see, see, you see these Luffy guys, like these trash ass animes, and I'm not, I'm not like dissing the, the, the teenager or the twenty something, but trash. Look at that trash ass anime. Anyways, um, going back to uh, the photo shoot, um, yeah. So even if you look average, if I had or anybody had good photos. I think it's going to improve your overall profile and I also think that's going to set yourself apart from all the other people who have just you know just doing selfies and stuff doing selfies <laughs> doing selfies in the bathroom or in their living room or some goofy shit like that if I do something like dynamic or at least get really good pictures I, I'll be able I feel like I'll be able to stand apart so I had a photo shoot after this popcorn thing and it was located in a place called friendship fountain which is like maybe like three or four minutes away now the thing is, is about this photo shoot it was like i was already complaining about how expensive like these photo shoots are or or at least to hire photography for 30 minutes do you know how much i had to spend for just 30 minutes for a photographer or at least for this particular photographer this photographer, I had to spend $175 for a 30-minute shoot. That sounds crazy, right? But at the same time, it's even crazier to realize that this was like the cheapest photographer I could get. This is one of the cheapest photographers I can get. So I spent $175 for 30 minutes, but it actually he actually started shooting for like maybe 40 to 50 minutes. So that was pretty cool. Um, uh... The fountain was filled with a lot of people. It was a lot of people walking around that fountain. And I would say that it was very interesting. Uh, I don't know. I was sort of nervous because it was sort of like hot on that particular day. And when I find the, found the photographer, he was like all setting up his stuff. And he's like, okay, I'll be with you in a moment. While the sun is like beaming down on me. And here's the thing with me. Like average person everybody sweats but to me i sweat to a higher degree it's like me it's like i'm like a snowman in a way where if you if you imagine a snowman and uh, i'm sorry my audio cut off all i was just saying was i sweat like a snowman when i'm out in the sun that's all i was going to say um so acknowledging that and also being in this big fountain area where there's tons of people walking back and forth. I don't really have pictures or footage of, of that. I think I have a, a few pictures, but I don't really have footage. I only have footage of me leaving the motherfucker. But um, that was very, like, somewhat stressful in a way. And at the same time, it was really annoying because you're, you're at this fountain and you're taking pictures and you're trying your best to be like some type of model and smile at the camera. This is the thing why I hate. This is why this is the thing I hate about dating profiles. The thing I hate about dating profiles is I have to take pictures, <laughs> and I hate taking pictures. I really, as as a man, I just don't. I don't like the. I don't enjoy the idea of standing in front of a camera and fake smiling 
just so that someone can take this photo, capture it, record it, and put it in, I don't know, put it in their phone, put it in on a, I don't know, put it somewhere. I, I just don't like it because it's not, it doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't feel authentic. It's like I'm being fake for the moment. It's not candid. You know what I mean? I like, I don't mind photos being taken of me if you catch me in a moment where I'm laughing or I'm having a good time. And stuff. But when I'm staring dead ass at a camera, it like bothers the hell at me. And that was pretty much what the 45 minute uh, show was, or not show, uh, appointment was for the photographer. I was in a hot ass, <laughs> I was standing out in a hot ass sun while, bead, while feeling beads of sweat falling down on my face and smiling like I'm a goddamn model, like I'm the fakest model in the world. I don't even know, I even haven't, haven't even seen the pictures yet. They haven't been developed or sent back to me. Um, so I don't even know how good they look or how bad they look, but I just felt really stupid while people were passing by. They were just staring at me, and I felt like people were like reacting to me a little bit too. Like when I was uh, walking past where, where I saw like groups of people. There was tons of groups of people, tons of families, you know, uh, couples and stuff, so on, walking past me while I'm staring dead ass at the camera, smiling like. I don't know, give me like the fakest smile in the world, trying to like pose and shit and squint my eyes, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was, I don't want to say it was mental torture, but it was a mental challenge. But at the same time, I had to say to myself like, hey man, fuck these people, man, I'm trying to get a date. And if I do smell, I, you know, it is what it is. I can't just keep, I just can't keep just staying in my apartment or staying away from out in public because of fear of someone saying I smell bad or I smell horrendous or I smell like feet or I smell like whatever. I got to keep going out. I got to keep doing this thing. This year is a year of being social. 2024 is my year. Look at that fake ass anime character. Look at that, that trash ass anime. I'm sorry. But you know, uh, back to what I was saying about the photo shoot. I, I did tons of photos. He wanted me to stand uh, near the fountain. He wanted me to look off in the distance. He wanted me to take my glasses off. He wanted me to give the fakest smile in the world. You know, we'll see how the pictures come out. If I finally get the pictures, I might even review them on the channel. But yeah, that that was a thing. Hopefully, I, there's like a few good pictures within the photo shoot. So then I can like put them up on one of my profiles and, you know, go from there, I guess. Um, other than that, like, what else happened? Oh, I, I just want to do a quick, quick rant about this. This, this not talking about photo shoots. I did want to do a quick rant about dating. If this shit doesn't happen, <laughs> if if I get these photos, receive these photos, and I find, you know, I find a good couple of, of them, and then I put one or maybe even two, because I wore the same shirt, so it'd be sort of weird to have like two photos from the same photo shoot in the profile. I don't know if that's a big deal to women. Anyways. I'll do that and if I don't get any likes <laughs> if I don't see like a visible difference in the amount of likes I got because throughout this year it's, it's it, at this moment it is March 30th 2024 um, I think I only got two likes <laughs> in the span of three months so if I don't see like some type of uh, noticeable difference in, in the uptick of likes bruh it's a wrap for my ass it's over you know what i mean like i'm just getting older and older and i'm getting more and more gray hairs i used to have gray hairs. my first gray hair i ever received was when i 26 now and it was like the small gray hair that was at the back of my neck now it's like on my chin and there's noticeable i thought about dying my my little what are these called goatees i don't know little chinny chin facial hair but i don't know I don't know. In any case, I just feel like it might be over for my ass. If 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 I even do all these fantastic photos and they look good, and I still don't get any traction, it's a wrap, bro. And I already know, like, I'm on an uphill battle. There was, if anybody has never looked into like dating apps, whether as at least as a man, there's a completely different dynamic between men and women um, on dating apps in terms of the amount of men on dating apps versus women i think there's like there's two times as many men as women on dating apps two i already i already mentioned that i made like a rant about it uh, some time ago but another th a part is 
like women get an absurd of likes from men to the point that it's very difficult for them to have um, just meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations. And if they do, they're going to be more picky since they already know they have like this abundant amount of men. So it sort of like makes it difficult for an average man to get, a, I don't know, any type of traction or any type of engagement unless he's like these top 10, top 20% men. There was like some study came out where like 20, 80% of women go after like the top 20% of men and I know I'm not in that top 20 spot since I'm only getting like two, two likes uh, uh, every three months. So uh, I guess my whole point is to try to <laughs> try, try my best to get in the top 20. Top 20, I don't think I will, ever will be. But I, I, I goddamn have to try. I got to get some photo shoots, maybe slim down some more, get better at making engaging prompts. Or I, don't, I don't know. I got to do something. I just can't just... Just give up, throw my hands, give, give up and say, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. I mean, there's also the possibility of uh, walking up and talking to people. I'm trying to warm up on ideas of how I can walk up and talk to people because I tried to do that in 2022 several times. And I just would just, I only talked to, walked up to three women in that whole year in 2022. So that was two years ago. And it, just, it was just so difficult. Like there was just so, this weird intense feeling of embarrassment whenever I saw an attractive woman and I said to myself I need to make a move I need to talk to this woman I would just get this intense fear this intense feeling of embarrassment and talk myself out of it if anybody if there's any dude who watches this video just and walk actually walks up and talks to women like do you have any tips I don't know but uh I don't know. I guess we're pretty much done with my ranting about this vlog. As you saw within the, well, with this, this viewing, there wasn't too much happening in this PopCon. You know, there was a few different things. There were some booth things that happened. There were some people playing video games, whatever. Ooh, there's another thing that happened. Um, I finally was able to do something. I finally got into a group activity this year. You know, I never got go into any type of group activities, always stay home because, you know, of fear, smelling bad, et cetera, et cetera. But I finally went into a group activity. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm doing ice skating. I went to an ice skating class two times, actually. This is the this, this week. I've this is the second time I went to ice skating and it is interesting. I I don't really have I mean, I really don't have footage like that. I have like small 10 second clips of me at the rink. And I only bust my ass once, so that's good. I only bust my ass once, but it's like, you know, the second week, I have eight weeks, so I might bust my ass a second time, or more than that. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting experience. Um, I don't know how deep I want to get into it, but I, the major reason why I wanted to do ice skating was because it was a, it's a cold environment, so if I start sweating, uh, the cold temperatures, I think it's usually like 40 or 50 degrees inside the, inside an ice rink. But the cold temperatures will cool me down. So that's why I wanted to go ice skating. It was either that or, or swimming because I don't know how to swim. Um, so I went ice skating. That shit costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money for eight sessions. You know how much it cost for eight sessions? It was like 230 something dollars for an eight week program. Two hundred thirty-six dollars for for two months. So the swimming cost would cost like eighty-nine dollars a month. But I decided to do ice skating because I thought that like, okay, this is more interesting, I guess. Um, but two hundred thirty-seven dollars, and then there's some extra hidden fee where you have to pay some type of annual or not. It's not even annual. Some type of uh, quarterly ice skating or roller skating or some type of skating service. So then it totaled out to like 250 something. It's, it's just it's insane. There's no wonder why a lot of people don't do any activities. Like the way that they just figure out ways to get more money out of you is crazy. But you know, um, hopefully within an eight week time span, I, uh, I I get pretty good at ice skating. There's this, there's this woman in the ice skating within one of my groups um, at the ice skating uh, thing. Her ass is mad cute. I'm trying to figure out her age. I think she might be around my age. 
maybe slightly younger, maybe three or four years younger, who knows. But her ass is mad cute. I remember seeing her first time, like, damn, she's fine. But at, you, at the same time, you're like, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to be like that guy that just stares at you <laughs> like a weirdo and shit. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Maybe that should be some type of uh, goal in my head to try to do small talk. But at the same time, if I ever like it, you know what the issue I have, the idea or the thought I have in my head about trying to meet women while in a class the fear I have is, if I meet this woman and I start talking to her or whatever, and then I say, hey, let's go out for, for a drink or something like that, and then she rejects me or something like that, she rejects my advances, whatever, then it's like, from the for the continual classes moving forward, there's going to be this awkward energy and she's going to avoid me, you know what I mean? <laughs> and she's going to try to think of every excuse not to be around my ass and I don't want that type of like, I don't want that type of weird energy around me so I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with that woman. I need to at least say something but I don't know. In any case, uh, this, is, this is a way longer video than I usually make but who cares? Uh, I'm pretty sure most people didn't listen to it all the way to the end and that's fine. People have other things to do with their lives and instead of listening to me rant about dates I can't get on. <laughs> dates I can't get on. In any case, I'm in right here. You guys have a good day or evening. Oh, is that the same Harvey's? Put your bike in.